Hello and welcome to Manager Adventures. This is Big Lee and today's quick fire after action report will pit some British Paris against German Panzer Grenadiers on D Day using the chain of command rules and the game will feature armoured vehicles, bocage, a vital bridge, a terrified onion jolly and some very big explosions. During the planning stages of D-Day it was quickly realised that the flanks of the invasion were vulnerable and needed to be protected. British and American airborne divisions were therefore tasked with this vital role. Their job was to parachute and glide a land into the eastern and western ends of the invasion lodgement to provide a buffer zone at either end. Major General Richard Gow, commander of the British airborne forces protecting the eastern flank, was given three specific tasks. 1. Capture the Orne Bridges 2. Neutralise the coastal battery at Merville and 3. Destroy the bridges across the Dive and its tributaries. The Germans had flooded much of the land around the Dive to discourage, discourage air landings but this also meant that if the bridges could be destroyed then the eastern flank of the invasion would have a large protective buffer zone protecting it. This game is very loosely based on one of those latter actions to destroy the bridges. In my version of the scenario, the area has been heavily bombed, but the bridge remains intact. Airborne forces have now reached the position, but need to hold it long enough to allow their engineers to set and blow, the charge, blow their charges and blow the bridge. If the British force the Germans to retreat by reducing their morale, then they will have succeeded in their mission and the bridge will be blown. On the other hand, if the Germans force the British to retreat, they will have captured an important bridge that opens the possibility of a German counter-attack on the landing zones of the airborne forces. For this game, I have used the British Airborne Platoon from the, the Chain of Command rulebook and used their three support points to buy them, them a flamethrower team. This may come in handy if the Germans decide to bring on any armour. The Germans have used th their opportunity to take a Panzer Grenadier platoon, also from the Chain of Command rulebook, and spent most of their seven points on an SDKFZ 222, with the final point being used for an adjutant so they can bring both of their senior leaders on the table very early in the game with no penalty. Much of the area around the bridge is fairly open and the river can only be crossed at the bridge and at a ford slightly lower down the river. So the German plan is to use the 222 to force a crossing at the bridge and inflict enough damage on the British defenders to force them to retreat. The British plan is to put some men across the river, inside a barn hopefully, on the enemy side of the river, to act as a spoiler for any attempts by the Germans to reach their objective. The remainder of the platoon will then dig into the ruins of the town and defy the Krauts to attack them. The game commences with a patrol phase with both sides pushing out trying to gain some ground. The British for the most part remain on their side of the river, however they are able to get one drop off point across the river and inside the barn as they had hoped, out front of their main line. This will give them a much needed fire position against the expected German attack down the centre of the table. Both sides start the game cautiously but the Germans bring on their SDKFZ22 very early because it has a very long way to drive uh, uh, to reach the bridge um, and it, when they want to bring its heavy machine guns to bear uh, as quickly as possible and hopefully this will tip the balance for the Germans as they try to push the powers back from the bridge. The first couple of phases is mostly movement and deployment and with units being tucked behind hedgerows and walls trying to get into a position and then suddenly a shot rings out. The British sniper in the church tower has seen a German unit in amongst the, the bocage and has taken a shot. The shot kills the infantryman and then all hell breaks loose as everyone opens fire. The Panzer Grenadier's first squad moves into position very close to the barn and begins firing into it. The senior commander joins them and initially he is cautious about launching an assault because he doesn't know what is inside the barn. However, his infantrymen are now in a position where they are being fired on from three different directions by the British and in the end he decides to launch an assault on the barn while he still has enough men to do so. 
fanatical zeal seems to be overcoming common sense. The melee is bloody, but ultimately the powers are defending hardcover and nearly wipe out the attacking Germans while taking moderate casualties themselves. Both German officers somehow manage to survive uh, the fight and the zealous Oderfeldwebel will soon be trying to bring more of his platoon into the fight. The British in the barn have survived a determined attack and will remain a fall in the side of the Germans for the rest of the game. The 222 continues to rumble down the road and will soon be in a position to open fire. Both sides still have key assets that have yet to be deployed onto the table, including a flame team and a piat team for the British, and a third infantry team for the Germans. Meanwhile, a French onion Johnny sees the action by the barn, decides he needs to get out of there pretty quick, turns his bike around and pedals away as fast as he can. The British deploy a mortar team, and they have line of sight on the 222, and they decide to take a shot. It's a hit, but the vehicle's armour shrugs off the impact with little more than a dent and some singed paint. Undaunted, the British then deploy a Piat team, who fires at very close range, but again the shot is deflected by the 222's armour. The Panzer Grenadiers now try to put pressure on the troops in the barn, firing everything they have at the structure. Then the 222 and one LMG team open fire on the pier in an attempt to take it out before they get a chance to fire again. The paras in the town return fire, but are themselves receiving covering fire, which is keeping their heads down for the most part. Now under this hail of fire from the Germans, the German commander senses an opportunity, he thinks, and uses the 222 and the high hedgerows either side of the road to advance the squad up to the bridge. Pouring fire into the British positions, they are pushed on by their fanatical leader and charge across the bridge into the defenders. In such tight confines, the fighting is bitter and vicious and the Germans are defeated almost to a man. What is left of the unit is thrown back and with that, the morale of platoon is broken and the Germans all fall back. The British have managed to hold on to the bridge and now their engineers can take their time about setting the charges and blowing the bridge in relative safety. The British made good use of the terrain to dig in and their spoiler team out front in the barn broke up the German attack as planned and allowed the close deployment of the Piat in a vital position. However, it was the hasty and uncoordinated attacks of the German commander that really lost the battle. This game represented just a few minutes of very intense fighting, but in the end the British were able to hold their position and achieve the victory conditions laid out by the scenario. The Germans would have been better served without picking the 222 as one of their support options. An extra infantry squad or other support weapons would have been much more useful as they would have been able to inflict more damage on the defenders before attempting any assault across the bridge. Well I hope you enjoyed that quick fire AAR. My first attempt at trying to do an uh, action report under 10 minutes. Um, I learned a lot. I'll definitely do better next time, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons about doing voiceovers, preparing my script, editing, taking photos. Photos are wonderful when you're trying to do this sort of thing because you can stretch them and shorten them as much as you like, whereas a clip is a clip and you can only do so much with it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to take more photos when I do the next one and hopefully I can get a slightly better edited version for the next game that I'm going to do. But uh, there you have it, my first proper uh, quick, quick fire after action report. I hope you enjoyed it and as always, if you did, please leave some comments in the, in the comment section below um, and of course, please like, subscribe and share. So until next time, look after yourself, get in as many games as you can, even solo ones and of course, keep rolling high.